Hello. Hi, everyone. Hi, Mand. Hi, Patty. Hi. Hi. Yeah, I'm trying not to use my glasses because they always reflect so much, but I can't no. see. Anything. So. <laughs> no. I'm just going to reflect. I'm just going to deal. <laughs> uh, do you know what? I had um, I had a comment from someone that the reflection. Um, hi, Yara. Hi, how are you? Oh, so good to see you, girls. <laughs> Women, ladies. <laughs> um, yeah, I, um, I, so I was just saying to the ladies, I'm not wearing my glasses. Uh, I'm really struggling to see um, anything, but I'm going to soldier on through. Um while we wait for everyone to connect, I am just going to do something to my camera. Um, who wants to introduce themselves? Man, do you go first? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I am Amanda Wood. Um, and I am over in the US. I am near the Philly area and I met Sarah on IG and we fell in love and she's amazing. <laughs> I can't say enough about her amazing coaching and I'm just so excited to um, hop on and meet the rest of you ladies. Yay. Thanks, man. Yana, do you want to introduce yourself? You're, um, we're, the, we're representing Australia, aren't we? Yes, we are. Um, hi, I'm Yana. I specialise in sustainable fashion styling and I've been working with Sarah for more than six months. I couldn't tell you exactly how yeah. long. <laughs> um, but, yeah, this is my first time for Tea and Chat, so I'm excited to be here. Yes. What's everyone drinking at the moment? Water. Water. I've already had my <laughs> coffee <Good water>. wine. <laughs> Um, Shannon, welcome, and Angela, welcome, and Patty, welcome. Um, we're just getting everyone to introduce themselves um, and basically where you're from and what you specialise in. Patty, did you want to share? Um, sure. I'm Patty. I am from the Denver area in Colorado in the U.S., so that's why I'm drinking wine because it's 5 o'clock at night. <laughs> <And> <laughs> I actually connected, Sarah, I connected with you during the on, the online, uh, getting your business more online, your stylist business more online. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I specialize in any area. Truth is, is I'm still working on launching my business. And of course, with COVID all happening, it's just kind of, it's been a struggle as it is for everyone, but I don't have enough presence yet to even get an online business really going. So I'm just kind of limping through, but I'm hanging in there. So I have so much to say about that, Patty, and, and you know, I'm going to stop myself because, as we know, I'll go off in a tangent and I wanted um, our other ladies to introduce themselves. Shan, thank you so much for coming. Hi, guys. I'm Shannon. And is that Yana, my friend Yana, that we connected with over going virtual last year? So fun. Yes. Good to see you. Hi. I have to say, love your website. I was so impressed and props to Yana because her sharing about the empire is what kind of pushed me over the edge to book in last October. So I'm so glad I can finally meet you. Yana, Yana, it's nice you. Yana's had a horror of a time with that website. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, God. Um, okay, so going. I'm ourselves right so yeah. I my name is Shannon I'm in California and I am specializing in petites and Shannon um Shannon is in my um, marketing coaching group and and in our last session we were talking about finding your weird which I'll probably touch on today um but in an effort to create and target an even more specific segment within the broader industry, you know, really as, as image professionals, your customer base is retail customers, you know, people that are shopping and, and um, so within that segment, Shannon was able to dive um, much deeper. So I'm going to get her to share that in a little while. Um, but first, Angela, welcome. Hi, thank you. Um, sorry, ladies, I've got my video off because I'm in the middle of um, a whole bunch of stuff, <laughs> so looking very unstylish-like. Um, <laughs> I'm from uh, I'm from Sydney, Australia, and um, I've had my styling business for a while, but 
because of COVID, I decided that I also, I also was doing a lot of sales training and had a um, coaching business, which I decided to get out of last year and get back into styling because I'm creative at heart and I guess I actually missed being creative and COVID taught me that. Uh, And I think as we all did a bit of a refocus and reshuffle in some way or another. Uh, So for me, I guess I, my focus is women in particular over sort of 40, 45. Mm -hmm. Uh, For me, I feel as though I'm, I'm almost 50 myself and I just feel as though there's a really beautiful thing that happens to women as they get older and there's also such a, um, you know, such a shift in so many ways uh, physically, emotionally and mentally. So I'm, I really enjoy it. And it's been interesting because all the clients I've attracted since going back into my business full time have been absolutely those so that's been a really beautiful journey. Um, yeah, so really great meeting you all. This is my first time on. So thank you, Sarah. My pleasure. What are we drinking? Oh, just coffee, actually. <laughs> the good stuff. I'm in my good chai stuff. latte. I had my second chai because, comically, I um, I got myself ready thinking that we were starting at 8 a.m., and I think when I've, I've had, you know, I'd already been up for two hours. My four-year-old has finally slept through the night in his own bed after a year and a half. So I was so Yay. distracted. <laughs> um, Yay. And, and, then, and then my daughter came in saying there was a giant spider. So I was all over the shop. Um, and I sat there thinking, no one's come to my party. And then I went, hey, maybe I'll just double check what time it is. So uh, it's the last day of the school holidays, thank the sweet Lord. So I think this is going to be a bit easier from next week on. Mel, welcome. Honey, how are you? Good. (laughs) Do you want to introduce yourself, darling? Yes, um, I'm Melissa and I live in the U.S. in the Midwest and I am a style and confidence coach for mompreneurs. And I just recently niched down. So yes. <laughs> into this uh, conversation. And I actually got a podcast invite the day after I niched down on oh, a mom, mompreneur specific podcast. So I thought that was a good, uh, um, really great. That's amazing. We Mel and I had a session, what, two, three days ago, and we um, were able to really fine tune within mumpreneurs, which, as you can imagine, is a massive market, already massive market. How are we going to slice out and be relevant to a specific segment within that who is being underserved? And that's really the goal um, of applying the, the strategy of a niche. And um, and whether you want to share it or not, Mel, uh, we, we, we don't need to say it, but essentially we added a couple of additional filters, if you like, um, in, a, in, in a way, in the same way that you would be setting up a Facebook ad and adding all of this different sort of demographic or psychographic data to make sure that we're targeting a specific person who's at a particular moment in their life and has particular needs. And... I thought the reason I really wanted to talk about this with everyone is I know it's one of the hardest things as image experts to do Um, and it's so easy to slip into a really broad target market because once you're trained, I feel like if you, you know what you're doing, you could help anyone. And, you, you know, you don't want to exclude anyone. So I wanted to hear from everyone, everyone's thoughts on why it is hard or if you are frightened of doing it um, and, what you know, what your thoughts are on um, the concept of creating a niche. Maybe it's maybe it's not even very clear about what people mean when they say it. Who'd like to kick off the discussion? Well, I'll, um, I'll share mine. I think that... Um, uh, I think that for me, it was what resonated most for me. So though I'm a mum and I have a, an 18-year-old daughter, and so, yeah, I could, you know, I could definitely break into that. I think it's where you feel most connected for me. It's where you feel that you, you can, of course, you understand the concept of what we're trying to achieve or the objective overall, but I feel as though for me personally, it was more about where do I feel the most in my heart that I can actually 
really, tr- truly step into my client's body almost, right? Get it, step into their mind and I get it um, wholeheartedly. So I, I went through menopause, started menopause um, three, four years ago. So again, that's given me another element. So that, that's for me what's really helped. Excellent. I'm just going to facilitate a conversation because we all know I can take over um, and I don't want to because this is a group environment. So I'll hold back (laughs) and everyone can share. Um, What I would ask is once you know what resonates with you, I guess we then want to also apply the, the, the consideration that we are building a business in a digital age and we're, when most of us are building a business without any advertising dollars behind us. So that means we're building an audience, a community, and then moving them through the buyer's cycle organically. And the only way we can hope to get in front of our ideal client is to be there at the time that they are searching for problems to um, solutions to problems. And the only way we can ensure we are um, there is if we understand what that problem is. And so the 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 trick for us, I think, is to marry what we care about, our brand values, what resonates with us, with a slice of the market that is currently being underserved. And that's probably the easiest way of thinking about a niche. If, if, um, if we think about ourselves, everyone is essentially trained in um, outfit curation, personal shopping, body shape and colour analysis, some of the technical aspects. Others aren't technically trained, but essentially we're providing similar services. So what? how can we then approach a smaller segment with a more targeted solution that they haven't seen or heard about yet. So that's that's the kind of crux of it that I wanted to get into with everyone. Um, Shannon, did you want to uh, did you want to share your experience? I guess the journey from starting your business to oh, okay, no, now I know exactly who I'm serving. Sure. Um... You did such a great job of pulling out of me what was unique. So I really appreciate that because I think a lot of us, we just, we don't know because we're ourselves and we can't see how we're different. Mm. So I think working with you was so helpful in that you were able to just pull that out of me. And (laughs) I was scared to death of niching down because you feel like, oh, there's only going to be like two people to style in this niche and I'm not going to have a business, but Mm. Um, what I'm finding is as I'm styling petite women, they are all wearing clothes that don't fit them. And I'm realizing, oh, wow, I have a lot of work and a lot to offer. And I just even in this last week got connected with some um, women who are starting petite brands. And I'm really excited because that's even, you know, more niching down. And I love your um, example of how you have your podcasts and you kind of share and talk and get the word out. And I feel like, you know, me connecting with these petite brands is just going to help kind of push that forward with finding people who need clothes that fit them that are short. And so, yeah. and I, I do want to say, so we, when was our coaching call? Like two weeks ago, yeah. we talked about finding your weird. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so um, what I had done was I was scrolling through these three petite Facebook groups that are pretty active mm-hmm. and people were throwing out things. And someone had said, am I the only one who has to shop in the kids department? You know, I'm 25 years old. Please tell me I'm not the only one. And, and so many people resonated with that. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of added that into my Instagram um, bio. And I like within days, my numbers had boosted and people like legitimate petite people are following me now. Whereas before oh. it was like stylists and like, you know, people that are not going to be my clients. Like, thank you for following me, but I really want to find my dream client. And I'm like really starting to get that. And I know because these are private accounts, like, yeah. you know, like I'd have yeah. to request to be, um, follow to follow them. Yeah. So I know they're like legitimate petite women who want to, you know, understand what I have to offer. So, um, and it's just slow, like two or three, you know, people here and there, but like I said, it's legitimate, That's it. you know, people. So, and you know, Shan, the, the interesting thing with what, 
where you've created that niche is um, is an underserved market. Women who are petite, and when we spoke about this, you shared with me some of the logistical issues. I think you mentioned something about the rise of pants always being too long or the lengths of pants. Um, you're you're actually providing specific solutions to problems, and it's 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 scary. It is scary to kind of go out on a limb and stand up for someone. Um, and that's why I sort of um, I said in my Facebook post yesterday, um, think about who you can stand up for, because um, sometimes conceptually it's hard to understand what you know. How am I going to pick a niche? Um, how do I know if they're going to be a profitable segment to serve? What's the competition going to be like? Um, so if you think about it from a, um, some of you that have done the Empire Blueprint, when I ask you that question about if your brand was a superhero, who are the bad guys? You know, who are you fighting against? Think Questions like that, it sort of trigger interesting um, ideas in your mind. Um, whereas I'd like to compare with Melissa, um, um, Melissa, you're um, targeting mumpreneurs, but you've added a couple of additional layers. So whilst mumpreneurs are certainly serviced already, you know, there's plenty of um, image consultants and brand experts and coaches that can provide services. Because you've niched down using a couple of qualifiers, which could be price, location, features, psychographics, lifestyle, culture, um, time, time of your life, you know, these are all the different kind of elements you can consider. All of a sudden, you're now, your message stands out because it's more specific to that type of person. Um, so I just, I find it fascinating. Um, Mand, you, um, I remember when we worked together, um, you have quite a sort of high touch customised approach um, and have you have you been using Garmin Tier? I know because you're in the States. You have been. Do you want to share with everyone how that's been? So I was waiting for your ears to be burning just last night because I was talking about you. <laughs> and I didn't realize that you were already talking to Lisa. And so I was like, Sarah's amazing. Definitely like if some oh. kind of, you know, collab something could happen, it would be just phenomenal. And so your, I hope your ears were burning because we were talking amazing things about you. But um, for the rest of the ladies, Garmentier is a platform that I use and I love. And it is created by a stylist for stylists. And the awesome part about it for me is that everything within it is your branding and you and you're able to send style boxes to your clients through Garmentier but all of the branding is you not Garmentier and it gives you accessibility to Vince or Misha Nunu or Tamara Mellon to send a style box to a client that um, they can get it try it decide if they want to keep it and then you get commission off of it and Garmentier also has a CRM and they're able to do lookbooks and they have the affiliate links and I'm able to bounce shoppable lookbooks through them. And it just has so many different aspects to it that is just so great for stylists and it makes you feel like a bigger business than you are. And it's just, I love it. It's awesome. And Sarah, if you can partner somehow, that would be amazing. But, you know, I remember because you, um, like, the, the sketch behind Amanda, she's done herself. Like, you, you are an, you are very artistic and um, I know that your the service you provide is for a, cli a high-end client that would like to receive all of the clothing. Not It's not like um, Stitch Fit or Trunk Club or anything. It's essentially it, um, Garment is facilitating for you that um, almost pulling and, and the, the freight, the delivery of a customised collection of clothing, which yep. is really interesting for people that live in regional areas or sort of that, that live in um, areas where you don't have a lot of access to shops. Um, I've got an interview with um, Jess Ryan, who is a stylist in um, in Victoria, coming out and um, uh, be coming out in the next few days. And what she has found really effective for her is cure, is basically doing the shop at you know she's the one that would do the drive for two for an hour and a half to the massive shopping centre, 
pull all of the beautiful garments so it's like a capsule and then hand deliver it to the client which pre-covid was was okay there's obviously a few tweaks but my point is that again if your niche is someone that is expecting a very high touch um luxurious premium service where they want everything individually like with man in everything's individually wrapped in tissue paper and there's handwritten notes and everything that that is a niche so that's what i would call you're kind of you're adding an additional layer of um customization um and and so if you look at how you stand out against your competitors um or your peers it's in it providing that level of service which other people other other client segments might not be interested in because they're happy to go and do the shop themselves or they're happy to receive let's say shop share tv video and and purchase things in their own time but once we know what our individual um, sort of unique, um, interesting component is, and we also match that with um, a, a segment that has been underserved, we then need to tell people about it. So something that I see, I don't know if any of you have experienced this, is when I chat with someone, for a stylist for the first time, we uncover all of these incredible things that you do. But if I, I haven't known that, until I've spoken to you directly because the way that you're presenting that that um, feature or approach is not clear on your um, in, in your digital footprint, essentially, on your website, on your social media pages, in your email signature. Um, Patty, do you want to share with us as someone that's just sort of starting to build your business where you think um, the challenges are with creating a niche? So I think for me, I mean, I, I probably somewhat misspoke earlier. I have, I've kind of started the process and I am kind of, my idea has been women in transition, but I feel like I need to, I think I, I feel like I need to dig down into that a little bit more. And so part of it too, is I've gone through this process with someone where I've kind of gotten my, a lot of my, um, I guess, marketing stuff together, my, like my colors, my images and that kind of thing for social media and it's beautiful and I love it. And I think it's me, but I don't know how it will relate to a niche market and kind of like you were just saying that it's like, Oh yeah, we, we didn't go there. And, um, but even again, um, trying to figure out where, where to break it down further women transition. That's, that's still kind of broad, honestly. Well, it'd be a lot of things. I think because Angela has just explained also she's gone through menopause, so she's it, you can already yeah. sort of like find people that are already targeting a similar audience. And really um, we we just want to find our own little piece of, of the pie, you know, to carve out our own little area. Um, and there are, there are so many um, phrase like catchphrases and common quotes about creating a niche, but... If we if we don't have the money to compete from an advertising perspective, what we're looking to do is to be able to create, let's say, one deep, genuine relationship with a with another person, as opposed to scratching the surface with a hundred people. So if we are going to start developing a relationship, if you think about it with with a new friend you meet, um, you have to know how their brain works and what they care about, and be and be brave enough to go deep and talk about that type of stuff. So for example, as we're all we're we're all now in that change of season, so in Australia it's fall, it's autumn, um and the uh, many image professionals might think, okay, well I'm going to talk about autumn trends, autumn fashion trends, what's the new what's the season, how to create um autumn outfits and looks. If everyone is doing that, then who is someone that we think, do you know what? No one's talking to that person. So, for example, Shannon, Shannon might do autumn trends for people that don't want to shop in the kids' department. So, you know, the grown-up version of of winter coats. But obviously, Shannon is not in Australia, so it would be spring. But you know, um, and it, it's it's hard. But um, and 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 it also doesn't mean that you have to stay in that in that need forever but we we just the only way we can create that conversation and then build that relationship which ultimately leads to a client booking or a conversion is to say stuff that matters um do, can i jump in yes for one sec yes your niche is exciting to me shannon because i'm a petite as well 
and I get a lot of petite clients. And I had a client on Monday who's 21 and we did a wardrobe audit and it's all kids' clients. <laughs> so we're getting... <laughs> And there is so much option for her, so I'm excited to get her some new clothes, but I think that you'll do really well because those women do really, really struggle. We really, really struggle at times, so I think that's fantastic. Yana, no, you're the same. I'm half not petite. I don't... <laughs> Sorry, I missed that. So I'm half petite on top and not petite on the <laughs> That's a weird one. Tors, um, Tors, welcome to the um, welcome to the chat. Do you want to introduce yourself, hun? Um, yeah, so I'm Tors. Hi, nice to meet you all. Um, I'm based in Melbourne, so the same as Sarah. Um, so I'm presuming that everyone is um, either in the States or the UK. Would that be right? Except for Yana and Angela. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm working with, Sarah at the moment on the blueprint um yeah modules and yeah it's been really really um it's been really good and it's really good making me really down into my business and where I want to go and niching is that's kind of where we're at right now I think um so I sort of started my business um I think it was sort of 2017, 2018, and I had worked in um, the film industry for about 20 years and I left there um, sort of end of 2019 just before COVID hit. So I'm just sort of, um, yeah, gradually really trying to focus more of my effort into really building this business and, um yeah, I think niching is definitely where I need to go. And I agree with petites. I'm a petite and <laughs> it's so frustrating trying to buy trousers and you just look, and you just have that gather bit in the crutch um, and it's they're always too long. Um, blazers are always just too long and too big of the shoulders because I'm quite narrow here. Um, yeah, so I think that's a great, great idea, Shannon. I agree. I think you'll do really, really extremely well. Do you know what this is though? This is this is just what happens when we talk about real stuff. So from a digital marketing perspective, Shannon, I'm hoping to see your next blog post, which is what to do when you're tired of crutch gathering in your pants. <laughs> you know, that because because that is what if that's what people are thinking, that's what they're searching for also. Do you know what I'm like that's that's what they're thinking about? And that's when I say you've got to find your weird because we're not going how to boost my confidence google search you know it's with we're we're looking specifically like um blazers with narrow shoulders i'm um you know assuming um or what have you so it's just so important and something that's um interesting with tours um we did an exercise the other day where or the uh, we did a bit of a competitor analysis so let's have a look at four different image professionals um, around the world, doesn't matter where they're located, but that are, that are targeting a similar type of client. And then we have sort of look at them and go, okay, so how does each one stand out if, if indeed they do stand out? And then who would your client resonate with? So you kind of, you almost reverse engineer the process of going, okay, well, is there a difference between what, um, you know, stylist X offers stylist Y and that's another way of getting into the mindset of our core client and um, I know towards you know it's it's been um, it's a challenging process to really sort of confidently go this is this this is what I'm going to own I'm going to I'm going to kind of put my flag in the sand here and go this is the area I own um, and sometimes it's a really subtle thing sometimes it's like it's, it's a category so Shannon it's like a category a subcategory that has been underserved um, for Mel it's it's more of a um, a moment in time um, uh, for Amanda it's more of a an experience so like features and high touch customization um, you know so you start to see um, uh, Yana really interestingly you're, you're essentially um, Townsville's top stylist slash there's really only one or two of you isn't there really your comp your <laughs> which is amazing 
And interestingly, um, yeah, you um, you do a lot of work with shopping centres, um, and so and and your I think do you want to tell everyone that your additional angle is sustainability and natural products and quality f- like fabrics and fibres, and that sustainability element. I've just told you to talk, and then I'm just talking. I do. <laughs> But sustainability, as we all know, is now a really popular term. The challenge now will be to say everyone I speak to now would would like to encourage a more conscious consumer behavioural choice or a more sustainable approach to shopping. Working with an image professional is the ultimate sort of um, step you can take towards creating a more sustainable um, footprint because we're trying to minimise waste and maximise what we already have in our closet. But it will be hard. The challenge for all of you now will be, okay, well, if we're all saying we're sustainable, you know, we have a sustainable value, well, then what does that mean? And how do I stand out? How do I communicate that in a way that's meaningful to one particular person? I think there's so much magic in that weirdness that you were talking about. So I'm going to tell you guys just a fun story from this week. So Monday I hit the shops and I was in Lucky Brand store and I saw this girl with the cutest croc lace up boots. And I, of course, had to comment, love your boots. We got to talking. She's actually a stylist. But the funny thing is, is... um. Her sister-in-law is the school nurse at my kid's school, and her sister-in-law had referenced me and gave her my website, and so she said, I've actually seen your website, and yes, I remember, it. You're, you do petites, so petites stuck out, mm. and then we were talking more, and I was telling her about my services, and she said, yes, I remember them from your website, because I only have three on there, which Sarah had recommended, mm. so just the more that you, like, weird out and keep it really simple and streamlined, like, it was all in her head, and, you know, yeah. I just thought that was so amazing that she would remember my website. I'm sure she's been on a ton of stylist websites, yeah. but just that I had that very clear, you know, I, this is a personal styling service specialized for petites and that really stuck out to her. It, it struck a chord. I'm, I'm, um, uh, for any of you that have friends in recruitment or um, HR, the way um, back in the day, if you applied for a job and you didn't have all of the uh, credentials listed or all of the experience listed, but you had some pep and get up and go, they would they would essentially give you an interview, you know, and you have the opportunity to maybe say, listen, I don't have everything you're looking for, but take a chance on me and and you might get the job. Uh, that's how I got my first job in, in marketing. Um, and yet now, if we have a look at the way people make decisions, particularly hiring decisions, you have to meet every single line item of the experience and the credentials and the skills that they have laid out in the job description. So what that tells me as a market is that people are now looking for the most specific solution to a problem or a need. So if you are floating in the broadness no one's going to give you a look in, essentially. Um, and th- so if we think, okay, okay, well, who is who is looking, who needs help creating an outfit or working out what colours suit them um, or understanding how to dress for their body shape or who's wanting to show up more? For the, um, Who did I chat with the other day? The stylist and we were talking about um, executive women that have the the top job they're they're at the pinnacle of their career but the the issue with confidence they have is that they feel like their outfits aren't really cool enough aren't aren't sort of on trend and and interesting enough compared to their younger colleagues and so there's almost that imposter syndrome comes in again now it's not to do with skills and expertise it's to do with image Um, so for us to be able to find that client you would almost need to be writing a blog post um, how to look cool in front of your younger colleagues you know really outline what the awkward vulnerable um sort of fear is well and that's when I say that's when I when I mean the weird because as soon as we um as soon as we talk about weird we understand it to be really sort of personal I'll tell you why quickly we're talking about weird apparently there are more searches on Google now um, regarding unusual and odd 
um, topics than there are kind of mainstream, which means everyone is getting really, really prescriptive about exactly what they're looking for, what that, what their needs are. So it's going to be like an industry challenge. This is one of the reasons why I love this industry and why I wanted to work in this industry is because if we can all pull out our own X factor and we can all think more commercially around how we match that up with the smallest viable market that's going to that's going to buy our services, you, you, you're laughing. I say you're cooking with gas. No one understands what I mean. But basically, you know, you're, you're good to go. <laughs> Who else wants That's to add something? True. I want to say the long tail searches because my last search was, um, what height should my selfie tripod be when you're short? Like that's super long. But wow. I was like, oh. when I'm sitting down, what height should the tripod be? Like, right? That's super long. It's and that's super so specific. Great. It's super specific, which means that there, there, the chance of you getting in front of someone who is searching for that problem and, and then that person choosing your content in amongst the billions of other articles and posts um, and search results there are online is much higher. That's, that's the game we're in with, with digital marketing. Who would like to add? I know I'm taking over. I was going to say, too, since we decided to niche down, I've really been able to go within some Facebook groups and ask for marketing research calls and be very specific. Like I'm looking for mompreneurs with businesses two years or less with children under five. So and I've gotten at least three people already scheduled for those. So I feel like I can really narrow in, you know, on what are their wants and needs and feelings. Um, yes. at their place and and so if we think mumpreneurs okay we understand mums are busy um they're trying to look professional we can we can broadly understand what the needs are but when we narrow down to within the first two years of their business or really the first 12 months of their business that tells us from a from a psychographic perspective, that they 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 know they need to invest in a change because they're looking to build a business. Whereas if you were saying mumpreneurs, um, some mum, I'm a mumpreneur. I'm a mum with a business, but I've already worked out what I've, I've already transitioned. You know, my 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 youngest is five this year. I found myself again. I'm in a different phase. Um, so there's specific shopping and styling needs. Um, and even mindset needs for someone that's just starting out. It's complete in the same way that as, as business professionals yourself, the needs of someone, let's say, in Patty's stage versus someone in Shannon's stage are different. So I can't just say I, 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 help, I help stylists with their marketing. You have to really target the specific needs of the different stages. So that's fantastic, Melissa, that you were able to get some market research participants. Really great. So, so I have a question. Hmm. Is this, I mean, this is kind of, you're talking about the weirdness. <laughs> you're like, yeah. this is really weird, but it's super specific. And I mean, I don't even know how I would use this, but I have a really narrow foot. Like, and nobody sells narrow shoes in the U.S. I mean, like most of the department stores don't even carry them anymore. And so it is a real problem. I mean, things fall off my heel, but it's a long foot, but it's a narrow foot. And okay. I surely cannot be the only one, right? You cannot be the only one. What's interesting is I have a wide foot but a narrow heel. So I nope. really struggle oh. with shoes completely. But if we think about that filter within the context of who you're already targeting as well, um, I know that comfortable footwear come, you know, the, the, the older we get, the more we're interested we are in comfortable footwear. So if you were creating content that is going to be relevant to your ideal client, it might focus around uh, footwear, um, you know, narrow feet, where to find comfortable but beautiful, elegant shoes, um, things like that, which as opposed to shoe trends for fall or shoe trends for spring, narrow shoes for like that's an additional filter that becomes relevant to someone that needs that that's not too weird that's wonderful <laughs> great thank you all right ladies let me just look at my notes i just thought i wanted to share a couple of things with you and it's not it's not that this is a presentation but i just thought i know this is a like sometimes a really hard topic um and 
I just wanted to make sure um, that everyone understood what we're supposed to do. Um, okay, I'm going to give you a couple of suggestions. Basically, for those of you that are still looking to sharpen up um, the niche, we think about what we're good at, what we want to do. Then we think about what's our competition doing, i.e., is everyone already doing that? Because if they are, we're going to need to ask ourselves, well, if I'm going to be offering, let's say, for Yana, if you were going to enter the petite market, you already know Shannon's in there. So if a client was looking to book a service with a petite expert, there has to be a differentiator. And then typically as a, you know, in, in, in business, it's either differentiating on price, location, convenience, um, demographic, lifestyle, culture, brand messaging, you know, what you stand for. Um, so just thinking about making it easier for someone to find you and making it easier for that person to understand um, who you are and, and how you're going to solve their unique weird problem. I think is going to revolutionise people's businesses. The end. <laughs> um, does anyone want to share anything else before we wrap up? I like that you're calling it weird. It, it does make it easier to think about what people would search for, totally. what they struggle with. Yeah. Like I had um, in the shopping centre I had groups that were just random groups and heaps of them were petite that said yes, but then I had some really, really tall women. One was 6'3". Oh and you could God. tell, like, she, I had to dress her differently than I would anyone else because she had about another foot of legs <laughs> than anyone else with her body shape and height. But, yeah, it, was, it took me a little bit just to quickly get there, but yeah. in the end she was so excited that she found something that didn't make her look like a grandma or... Yes, and so with your expertise, Yana, you might be thinking, now, depending on whether there's more tall women in Townsville um, or not, but you, your approach um, to focus on natural fibres, sustainable, you know, um, products, natural beauty products and makeup, but you add that with a, a, a kind of um, a, a demographic filter or tag which is and you're tall creates some really specific content that stands out so it's just about working out where you're happy to play now because you're not tall, as in you you've said that you're petite and you don't necessarily specialize in tall that may not be something that resonates with you completely but no but it's just interesting to find that who would go to something if you've got a blog post that's very specific you are going to get a lot more targeting absolutely i always refer back to my makeup tips for deep set eyes search that i do every day which is where to put the eyeshadow on a deep set eye like it's it's so specific i'm just i'm not looking for fun new outfit ideas a fun new makeup ideas um I'm looking specifically. So we need to know, we need to pick some specifics essentially and um, stick with them. Um, all righty. Lovely chatting, ladies. <laughs> so good chatting. So nice to meet all of you. And so I had something to run past you if you had a second after this. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll, um, we'll, um, man, we'll disconnect and then connect again. Literally, like as in disconnect, so it starts a new recording, and then um, and then connect again. Um, I'll I will uh, upload this video to our Facebook uh, group. So if you want to watch it again, just to revisit all of the fabulous conversations, you most certainly can. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Sarah. Sarah. My pleasure. So good to meet you, ladies. Thank you for coming to my tea party. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bye. Everyone. Bye.